Greetings, YouTube, and welcome to the Blue Corner to some card for figured OCG chart results. New sets out, and at least as far as teams and two deck format goes, it's actually doing things to the metagame. So, let's get right into this. So, uh, side note, as far as worlds go, I'm not going to be covering it in this video. I'll save that for probably the next one we when we actually have, like, the listings, like, uh, who placed where. I know what won each format, but I'd like to know what the top four was for each format and other stuff, but I know Pale Moon won standard and Gold Paladin won premium. The Gold Paladin player apparently sandbagged his opponent and he had the game won for more than three turns but chose not to win it and instead he more or less just pissed around so he could try and do a flashy Generation Break 8 finish. And the other controversy that I know of was that... What was it? Oh, yeah, someone got caught outside the venue smoking weed, and in Japan, that is uh, not good. Like, I I think they can actually deport you for that, and you aren't allowed back in for some number of time. Like, I'm not obviously that familiar with Japanese laws, but I've heard that they are, like, super strict on that. Like, this isn't Canada. You can't do that stuff. So that being said, let's actually get into it. So... First up, we have the 20th 183 VGCS, standard format, 24 teams. First place was Revon, Tachikaze, Riviere. Second place was Vanquisher, Agravain, Riviere. Third place was Riviere, Vanquisher, Revon. And fourth place was Riviere, Tachikaze, Vanquisher. And as far as the numbers go, 21 out of the 24 teams had a BT player. 13 had a Narakami player. 9 had an Aqua Force. 7 had Murakumo, and so forth. So. As usual, BT is pretty much on all the teams, except for three in this instance. Narakami are on over half the teams. That's pretty cool. And then Aqua Force are just a little bit less than that. So Narakami and Aqua Force are the two Axel decks of choice for this event, which makes sense. Revon's good. Vanquisher is a little bit better. Like, it's high roll is... Like, when Vanquisher high rolls, it can really high roll, but it's low roll is pretty decent, too. Obviously, going second against Bermuda Triangle is a giant oof, but that's pretty much the case for every deck out there. But Vanquisher's turn four is scary, especially if they get that second ride off and they're able to set up a board of Cho'os and having uh, bind hand binders plus extenders. Like, like you guys saw the video of me playing the deck in action, and uh, Vanquisher, when it pops off, is pretty damn scary. Like, this is easily one of the strongest variations of the deck I've seen in a long time. Sure, it's missing some things that the Gauntlet build has, and in the future I might actually consider playing a Vanquisher Gauntlet hybrid or just Gauntlet in some numbers, because Gauntlet does do things, but I feel like Vanquisher just does more. It's... Um, what's the best way to describe it? Oh, uh, you know what, we'll, we'll save that for like when I eventually do a profile on Vanquisher, but in any case, let's get into it. So, first place team, we've got Revon here, then you've got... Tachikaze, then Bermuda Triangle. Second place team, the Urge of Vanquisher. Uh, things to note, this is pretty similar to the build that I had theorized prior to this weekend. The only real thing is that these guys are playing more copies of Voltec Shred Dragon and Zui Ten as opposed to Voltec uh, Horn, uh, yeah, Voltec Horn Dragon. And after doing some playing without Voltec, I don't really miss it. Like, the thing about Voltec is he's nice as a answer to your opponent committing cards early, but I've noticed that people actually don't do that. More often than not, they're just going to ride Vanguard Swing, and then turn two, they'll ride Vanguard Swing. Very seldom do they actually call things up for you to actually kill, and if they do have something to kill, Cho and get rid of it. More often than not, though, you're going to really start killing things when you hit grade three, so the Vanquisher and Jaggy Shot are able to do so. Cho can sometimes kill, and... Sometimes you can also play Death Scythe. Like, there's going to be some lists in here that run a one of Death Scythe. I do like the Zui Ten tech in here. Like, I, after playing with it, I realized that Zui Ten, much like Dragon Shot, has the opportunity to help you draw into Shatsuda and the Desert Gunner. If you already and if you already have a Dragon Shot or a Voltic on the board, then you can extend that much harder. So, yeah. Like, I really do like what this deck does. Like, it actually plays like an Axel combo deck as opposed to being a control deck masquerading as a combo deck. Like, now we have a more combo deck. And so, there's that. And then you've got Gold Paladin and BT. Let's see, third place team. So, BT, Narukami, and this one's playing the one of Scythe, and Revon. So, this is a much more clear picture of what a Revon deck looks like. 
And if I'm looking at this correctly, I don't think this plays very many foils from the older sets. Uh, you've got the perfect card, obviously. But I think... Anyway, and Tidal Assault, and I'm assuming this guy up here is that Grade 1 Triple Bear. But it's a Grade 1 Triple Bear. It shouldn't be that pricey to pick up. Like, I know cho -O's, last I checked, were under $5 American. So, like, if you're interested in picking up this deck, I'd say just go get some of these cards. Because, really, you're getting most of the deck needed cards out of this set. And Revon will be a much easier Grade 3 to pick up than say maelstrom a glory maelstrom where you would need eight vrs for that deck this one just needs four and then your backup grade three is a double bear so i think this would be a very good option for someone who's looking to pick up aquas but didn't want to pay for maelstrom and also just didn't like how that deck plays side note i'm happy to see glory get yeeted out of aqua force because fuck that card I know, and I'm saying this even though I've been playing with Gauntlet for a while. Like, I honestly think that Glory Maelstrom is just a badly designed card, much like Gauntlet. Then, fourth place, you've got BT, Tachikaze, and Vanquisher. And the one of Death Scythe's in there. So yeah, there's that. Moving on, we have the Domon VGCS, two-deck format, ban one, however, and 40 people are at it. So, this format, if you... But curious what it means is that basically you bring your two decks to your match both you and your opponent confirm which ones uh, what they are and then you each choose which one that your opponent is not allowed to use so an example here would be this first and second playoff uh, they both look at their decks and then player one decides to either prevent his opponent from playing Riviere or Vanquisher and then vice versa more often than not they're gonna go with the one that they have a better chance of playing against and from what I was told Nearly everyone who had the option of forbidding their opponent from playing Riviere did just that. So, like, you see these Riviere decks, but they didn't actually see much play. So, the finals was actually Pale Moon versus Vanquisher. In that case, yeah, I could see Vanquisher losing that one. If your opponent has nothing on the board, it's a bit more difficult for you to pop off. You can still do so, it's just it requires more work on your part. And it's going to be much more difficult for you to get the 10k buff, which is what allows this deck to really just go all in on it like that. But... You got, what else is in here? So, first place, Pale Moon, Riviere. Second place, Riviere, Vank. Third place, Vank, Beast Deity, God Hand. And fourth place, Riviere, Murakumo. So, here's your first place, Pale Moon. First place, Riviere. First place, Riviere. And, okay, so even though that this picture is the exact same, I had to go back and take a look. And it's the same photograph for the second deck of first place and the first deck of second place so there was either a photograph error or they really were just playing card for card the same deck and like the the camera angle on, this, on these things is like different but it's the same deck identical so whatever anyway here's your vanquisher list so this guy's actually playing gauntlet and we're gonna see in this that the other vanquisher decks are playing gauntlet here too so uh, before we saw vanquisher jaggy shot this time we're seeing vanquisher jaggy shot gauntlet uh, mind you, you can fetch Gauntlet with Mighty Bolt, and Gauntlet does have his applications in some matchups. I'm not as big of a fan of it in here, but I'm I am open to trying it out. This guy's also playing the one of Helena. Makes sense if you're throwing Gauntlet in here, the deck becomes more Counterblast heavy. Otherwise, though, I've actually found that I don't really use a lot of Counterblast in this deck. Like it's just really Vanquisher and Cho. Everything else doesn't Counterblast. It's actually pretty cool like that. You got. There are other Narukami players, so this one is playing, not playing Death and he's maxed out on Zubitan instead. Like, he's just playing four grade threes, and he's playing nine grade, I mean, four grade twelve twos. Twelve grade twos, nine grade threes. Numbers are hard. There's your backup BC to Gone Hand. And then lastly, you've got Riviere and Merkumo. Man, Kumo's taking a beating as of late. Makes sense, so I think I think Vanquisher and Revon are pretty close to the same power level of that of Hyuga and Anger Blader. So that's a thing to make note of, but big grain of salt here is that these are of course team and two deck formats where Riviere was not allowed to be played, more or less. I'd imagine if this was singles and best of one at that, we'd probably see more Riviere than anything else in top cut. But it is nice to know that at least if you meet Riviere in the dice roll with, say, Vanquisher or Revon, you have a reasonable chance of beating them because you went first and you're able to 
just go off. Like, that Revan deck's scary when it has all its pieces, and Vanquisher, if it has its pieces, can also just go nuts. And that's pretty much all I got to say about this. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and until next time, this is Boost 39 checking out.